somebody asked me in the youtube comment section in some recent video and in the last so many videos that i've made and so many others also in the past i always keep saying that you should be able to identify the flow of the chart where is the horoscope flowing what does it mean and how do you find it okay the flow of the chart means that you should be able to identify what are the primary areas that this person will be associated with during his or her life what is this horoscope going to achieve at the end when i say end i don't mean uh, okay after 50 years somebody will become the ceo of a company that's the main goal i'm not saying that okay i'm not speaking of destination obsession here it's the journey where is the journey how is the how are the planets uh, harmonizing with each other okay which planets are setting the agenda okay so therefore this is something which is uh, known as uh, low of the chart basically where is this person going in, in short basically nothing more than that okay so you could call it various by various names you, you could say oh it's the destiny of the person it's the karma it's the prarabdha or whatever you want to call it okay or you could say how this person will use his or her free will um that's either that's uh, up to you which which terms you want to put but essentially if you see a person's life like 80 years of his life then how does it seem what the person do okay and within that there are different areas like how do you see how much free will the person has or how much is already destined and uh, what are the areas where he could have uh, changed things if he would have put more effort or what what are the areas which were like very strongly destined which even though he tried he could not change and even though he would have tried more he would have still not been able to change okay so these are some uh, definitions of this uh, statement uh, flow of the chart okay so is the journey of a person basically so and as usual uh, if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation regarding your flow of the chart or your journey you can go to my website down below in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him irrespective of where is the flow of your chart now disclaimer here flow of your chart may not be always good good means it doesn't mean that oh when you see, when you see the uh, flow of a criminal's chart then that could lead to criminal activities okay so when we are talking of the flow of the chart it is very important that you do not bring contextual morality into it what is right wrong what is good bad okay that is a totally separate arena altogether now when you find the flow of the chart you have to assume that there there's nothing like you know everything is just one okay which means we are just seeing the behavior we are just seeing the actions okay um, now that could lead to something which is good or something which is bad that that has nothing to do with the flow of the chart okay of course you need to use deshkal patra in that sense when you find the destiny but you uh, you should not say oh okay so this is this is uh, going in to a good place this is not going to a good place so maybe this bad place is not the flow of the chart well it could be that the chart is flowing towards that side because many people are uh, there are many criminals in kaliuga okay uh, physical and mental criminals intellectual also so therefore you have to be non judgmental uh, when you are uh, seeing this flow okay of course it is our duty to help somebody if we see that the flow is going in a bad direction to try and help the person to go towards the right side but uh, we have to understand that sometimes our words may fall in deaf ears okay so therefore when you uh, start looking at the flow of the chart it's very important that you start first by looking at the horoscope individual horoscope and the planets okay then you uh, see the nakshatras of these these planets then you see the dashas the dashas are most important then you see the major transits okay so for example 
when you see the horoscope you have to and within that horoscope in the first step when you see all the different planets you have to keep into consideration the primary most important planets which are the most important planets we have sun moon the ascendant and the ascendant lord the ascendant is not a planet but any planet sitting in the ascendant and the ascendant lord itself okay so let's assume there is a planet in the ascendant at least one then these four planets you need to watch okay and if there are no planets in the ascendant then these three and if there are four five or maybe all eight planets sitting in the ascendant then you have to watch all of them okay so that's what i'm trying to tell you so once you see uh, what is the sun doing what is the moon doing what, where is the lagnesh the ascendant lord and what is the planet sitting or the planets in the ascendant what are they telling you okay these three or four or five planets these are the most crucial planets in a chart they will tell you what is actually the person's inherent disposition what is the person's nature the sun will tell you how does this person take things externally the sun is very good very strong then this person will be geared up gearing up for uh, external survival very much because sun represents the kingdom and if the moon is very good then this person will not only want to gain things externally as a king the person will also be interested in uh, enjoying and uh, relaxing and actually having a feel good factor trying to cultivate that feel good factor from everything and anything that happens in that person's life okay so now when i'm saying good i'm very careful here by good i just don't mean now when i say good i know what he will do i know that he will go down he will say oh my son is in aries it is exalted it's great but nothing is happening blah 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 you will say my moon is in scorpio but i am a good person you know i am not a criminal i am not a uh, bad person no i am not saying just by sign there are so many factors to determine if a planet is good or bad okay and again here not good bad not in a moral sense but how much strength is that planet having how much execution can you do when it comes to your externals or how much can you work within or yourself internally okay in that context i'm saying uh, good or bad i'm not saying on a moral sense okay of course it's if it's morally good scripturally good then that is enhanced but that is not what i mean when i say okay sun is good okay sun may be very powerful in a criminal's chart and he or she may go on doing criminal activities all right so it doesn't mean that if you have a good sun you will always be a good nice person it doesn't always mean that okay but of course the other placements have to support that agenda so once you see uh what these planets are doing then you try to you try to see how is the harm what kind of story are these planets trying to bring in where are the nakshatra lords of these planets sitting okay sun moon ascendant lord and yeah ascendant lord as i said sun moon i spoke and the ascendant lord will tell you where are you externally putting your energies which area of life is very important for you okay wherever the lagnesh is in the bhav chart so once you have seen them then you see which planets are sitting in the ascendant or aspecting the ascendant the planet sitting or aspecting the ascendant will affect you very much either in a good way or in a bad way okay so these these are things which if happen in which if they come to you somehow by through some other people then this can really uh, take your life to a next level or it can pull you down okay either ways these are things uh, as i said planets sitting in the ascendant or aspecting the ascendant they can really make you or break you okay so once you see then you have to understand okay this is the person's focus this is how the person sees externals the sun and this is how the person feels about his uh, kingdom that he has which is the moon okay you then you have to understand where where are the nakshatra lords of these three four planets sitting then you will, then you will understand so for example if the nakshatra lord of the lagnesh is sitting 
in the tenth house. Okay, so for example, if your uh, lagna lord is uh, Saturn and it is sitting in Swati Nakshatra, any any person, it is exalted. Uh, but this Nakshatra lord of Swati, which is Rahu, is sitting in the tenth house. For example, then it means that there will be huge recognition when you put efforts because the nakshatra lord shows the uh, the placement of the nakshatra lord will show the end result okay so imagine uh, saturn is uh, in swati it is there in the eighth house so lagnesh is in the eighth house so then what will you say oh it's terrible you know it's the worst thing to have okay you will say all these things but then what if Rahu is in the 10th house? Okay, That's a brilliant placement. Why? Because the Nakshatra Lord is telling you that through ups and downs, through upheavals, which is the 8th house, which is the planet, which is the externals, you will have massive success. Okay, Or Rahu is in the 11th, even better. Or So that, that's how you know. So, so you know that an important part of this person will be to go through uh, externally at at an external level will be to go through a lot of ups and downs because the lagnesh is in the eighth. But eventually the person will rise. Then you see, oh, how is the sun? Where is the sun taking this person to? What does the person value externally? Okay. Where is the sun? Where is the nakshatra lord of the sun placed? Where is moon? How will this person perceive this world at the end of the day? How will how much happiness will the person have? That the nakshatra lord of the moon will tell you. Okay. So where where is the what kind of energies are playing? Is there any harmony between these houses? What kind of harmony is there? So, for example, if the nakshatra lords of all these three, sun, moon, and ascendant lord, if the nakshatra lords of these three are sitting in the second, seventh, and eleventh house. In these three houses, then these are houses of marriage, 2nd, 7th, and 11th. So then you know, oh yes, that means the flow of the chart is indicating tremendous focus externally, internally in a person, in this person's uh, area of marriage. So then you know, anything that happens in his or her marriage can make him or break him. Then you have to see the next thing. Okay, what are the other planets saying? Are the other planets helping this person? Are they uh, indicating a good marriage? Which means they are supporting the second house, seventh house, eleventh house. Or they are, you know, negating. So how do you know that? Where are the other planets placed? What kind of nakshatras they are in? Uh, like, uh, for example, uh, there are some nakshatras which... Uh, which enhance uh, togetherness, sense of being together. Like for example, Anuradha Nakshatra, then we have Rohini Nakshatra, then we have Revati Nakshatra, then we have Pushya Nakshatra. And there are Nakshatras which show independence and stupidity sometimes, you know, so wanting to be independent. Okay. The, for example, uh, we have Jeshtha Nakshatra, we have Mula Nakshatra, we have Kritika Nakshatra. Okay? These are the Nakshatras. And sometimes every Nakshatra has a different flavor depending on which planet is sitting there. So then you know, okay, this person will be wanting married life, but somehow this person's inner nature is that uh, he's very much sharp. You know, he's not considerate about the spouse. So then that might create rifts within the, within the married life. Okay. Or if it's the other way around, you know, if the, these planets are in nakshatras, which uh, encourage married life, okay, then you know that, okay, this person will really have a very happy married life. Now, for example, next stage is your dashas. Now in this case, married life is very important for this person. Okay. But suppose the person is running, going to run Saturn Mahadasha. Let's take an example. And you see, unfortunately, Saturn is in the sixth house of the Bhav chart. You see that. Now here, this is an example of where the person wants to do something. He wants things to go in a particular way. But exactly the opposite is happening. Why? Because the sixth house is the one which exactly breaks your marriage. The first, sixth, and the tenth. So then, 
what happens then this will be very difficult for the person okay so that is why you will see many times people have planets in the sixth house but sometimes their married life is not that great they are okay with it sometimes it is very bad but they are able to function normally but for this person if this happens this will really ruin this person's mental health because this is totally opposite of where the chart is flowing so it's like you want to be there in the marriage with the spouse but due to some reason you are not able to be there or the spouse doesn't like you or some or you have started hating your spouse or something like so this is really like one vector is pulling you so badly towards the other direction so you now whatever the dasha lord says will happen okay but it still cannot override the overall chart okay so that's a very critical position uh, which this person will be in because now externally he might be separated from his wife or they might stay in different places but then that's not something which he wants because the rest of the planets are not speaking in that same tone so this will really be a very difficult position okay well on the other side if uh, most of his planets are by the placement of nakshatra lords indicating the first house or the sixth house or the 10th house now then uh, the opposite can happen then if saturn is in the sixth and the size active the person is very happy he is like oh finally i am happy singer <laughs> so then then the opposite could be true if now this same saturn would be in the seventh house this can really wreck havoc because he would be he might be forced to marry then he will feel that marriage is a burden my spouse is like a burden to me i don't need any member of the opposite sex i can just stay by myself i don't want to take responsibility of children or anybody or no responsibility of in laws nothing why should i i am happy by myself i don't need anybody all this a uh, modern uh, independent minded uh, or i would say modern stupid independent minded thinking can come Uh, which is only appreciated if the person is a monk and has a spiritual journey otherwise it is not to be entertained okay these thoughts which is very dangerous because later on the person may uh, feel that when the dasha changes that yes now i need somebody but then that's the problem you know you you have crossed uh, so imagine this is coming at the age of 25 and then uh saturn mahadasha starts and after 19 years it's like 20, 35 or 44 at the age of 44 suddenly we will get this uh desire if mercury is in mercury is well placed then suddenly we will get this desire okay oh yeah, yeah now i want now i need to marry you know so then your spiritual progress gets delayed because then you will have children later on then you have to take care imagine you have children at 50 then by the time they are 25 you will be 75 okay and you have to get them settled and you have to it's a big mess all right so therefore you have to you have to identify where is the flow of the chart is marriage uh, good how, how does this person see the married life how does this person see career how does this person see job how does this person view self employment how does this person view business how does this person view children okay so this is how you find out what what will actually the person what what is that which the person will actually value in life okay and when you are doing compatibility matching this is the most important thing you have to find this this commonality should be there imagine a person who is very independent minded uh, wants to stay just by himself gets married to somebody who is very much uh, wanting to stay together with the family well they can't stay even one night together right because that that's like a difference of uh, mismatch of energy okay so once you know the flow of the chart then you know what is actually going on in this person's life okay what is the focus area which are the focus areas when you are doing consultation you should always tell that my dear sir my dear madam these two or three at least two or three maximum 
four, I would say. These two or three areas will consume your life overall and in your upcoming dashas. When you tell that, then the person gets a right bent of mind. Okay, these are the things that I need to focus. Okay, when this dasha comes, this will be my focus. When that dasha comes, this will be my focus. So this is the most primary thing which I try to do when I do consultations. To whatever extent possible. Sometimes it shows that the person will only focus in one area. That's very rare. Sometimes to generally I have seen up to three. Sometimes it's very crazy. Sometimes I see the person is going to focus on uh, five different things. Okay. So then it becomes very complicated and very difficult to say what eventually the person will end up doing at the end among those five areas. But it doesn't happen everywhere. Generally, it happens the person has two or three focus areas. And within that, depending on the dashas, one area comes into limelight in one Mahadasha. And in the next Mahadasha, another area comes into limelight. Okay. So as an astrologer, if you do consultations, it is your prime duty, one of the prime duties at a gross level when you are talking of gross mundane astrology, okay, Specif specifically for a client now to identify at least two or three uh, focus areas, not career wise, not that the person will do, you know, advertising in career. No, I'm not talking only career, every in all aspects of life, okay. What are those two, three areas that this person is likely to focus on? Because, and this you have to analyze irrespective of dashas, because I have always said earlier that the dasha, the dasha does not change the person, it changes his focus. Okay. So, this is something which you have to identify independent of which dasha is running. And then the dashas will alter the focus, maybe from one area to the other, but it will not change the mindset of a person. Okay. Dasha does not change the mindset. It changes his focus to some other place, which is already there in that person in that horoscope. It's not, it's not something new that starts during Dasha. Okay. It is not like that. That quality, that trait, that talent, that uh, knowledge, that skill is already there in the person. Because that is there in the planet and now just that dasha has started and this planet has now got activated. Okay, so many times people say that, oh, this dasha came and this person went somewhere else. No, it's not like that. It's not that the dasha brought some magic. This was all, this potential was already there in the person, in his chart. That is why this has happened. Okay, It doesn't happen that one dasha comes and the person goes somewhere either up or down hmm. all right so and there are many facets to this you have to check the divisional charts and all so it's a very detailed discussion but i hope this video could give you a anchor point to see uh, what kind of planets uh, what kind of nakshatras are there in the chart what where are the nakshatra lords of these planets and which houses are supporting uh, the main agenda okay like i said sixth house breaks the marriage uh, or fifth house ninth house they support the marriage okay so then you know that the other planets like these primary planets are indicating the second seventh eleventh they are indicating married life and the other planets are linked to the fifth and the ninth houses they are helping the marriage indirectly okay or sometimes directly okay but if the sixth house is involved, then it is not supporting. So then that dasha will be very difficult. Okay. So therefore, uh, please understand. Uh, now I hope you understand why a planet in sixth house can sometimes be as if, oh, it's nothing, it's just a placement. And sometimes it can be really like hell for somebody who is married. Okay. So therefore, the next time you comment below any YouTube video, astrology video oh my saturn is in sixth house what will happen you know now people will flood comments there my venus is in sixth rahu is in sixth there you go now you know how to answer that question okay thank you very much for your patience and if you want a consultation from me the website is down below and please subscribe to the channel and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him